Good morning and welcome to our devotion this morning. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise. And with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Today we consider um, a verse of Psalm 23, a very familiar psalm. We'll just read verse 4 today of Psalm 23. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. By nature, an individual's death is a terrible event. Natural man's highest good in his earthly life, with its goods and its joys. The natural, excuse me, natural man's highest good is his earthly life, with its goods and its joys. Departing from those joys is the saddest fate that can befall him. He vacates his house and moves into the small, dark chamber of the grave. It pains him to consider that at his death, he will leave behind his money and his goods, which are the desire of his eyes. These will become the property of others, and he himself will be completely impoverished. The thought that his body, which he now serves and adorns, will then lie as an ice-cold corpse on its final couch and finally rot in a moldy grave, decomposing and becoming the food of loathsome worms, shakes his entire soul, and fills him with horror. If the natural man now considers that death is not an annihilation, but an earnest messenger of God calling him into the great judgment hall, where he will receive what his deeds are worth, either inexpressible blessedness and glory, or eternal pain and punishment, then his false comfort disappears. He is now thrown into doubt and despair. With broken lips, he calls out, Oh, may I live until tomorrow. Even true Christians are frequently seized with fear when they approach the dark valley of death. On account of this, no one can be secure. You may think you do not fear death, but have you ever looked directly into its smirking face, into its hollow, staring eyes? Truly, it is not the might of man, but God's grace alone that can overcome this king of terror. We see this clearly in the words of today's reading. They show us that if a person wants to overcome the terror of death and even to climb down into the darkness of the grave with confidence, he must forsake the world from his heart and draw near to the Lord, choosing him and his grace as his highest good and leaning on his word as his staff. If an individual comes to the point where he can say with David, for you are with me, that is, I hold you to myself as my true treasure with the hand of my faith, and your rod and your staff, they comfort me. That is, I build upon the hope of the promises of your gospel. Then he can also add with David, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. These words signify that he does not fear any separation, any grave, any hell, or any damnation. For by God's grace, the grave is the cottage of peace, and death is the portal of life, the departure out of this world, and the entrance into heaven. The German proverb says it well, a clear conscience is a soft pillow. But where is the person who has never stained his conscience? Who can be pure when no one is pure? Where is the one who is not a sinner? Oh, miserable is the one who relies upon his conscience, who hopes to slumber upon this pillow at his death. At the moment of death, the conscience, which had fallen asleep during life, will awaken in most people and change into a pillow of thorns, of doubt and terror. There is only one way a person can die gently, confidently, and blessed. 
He must learn to go to God as a poor sinner and to call upon him for grace, for Christ's, his Savior's sake. He must learn to seize Christ and his promises of grace in faith. He must taste and see how friendly, how good, how gracious, and how merciful the Lord is. If he does all of this, he will despise the world and learn to long for heaven. St. Paul had recognized and experienced God's grace in Christ. He certainly knew that he had a gracious God and that he would be saved. For this reason, he thought of leaving this poor world. The, the thought of leaving this poor world did not cause him any grief. He was not afraid of death. Instead, he longed for it from his heart and said, I have a desire to depart and be with Christ. And so we pray. Since thou the power of death didst rend, in death thou wilt not leave me. Since thou didst into heaven ascend, no fear of death shall grieve me. For where thou art, there shall I be, that I may ever live with thee. That is my hope when dying. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things. On this day, when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you all for joining us again and blessings on the day ahead.